This is SOLIDWORKS tutorial lesson 4.2. In this lesson we're going to talk about naming files and looking at the path references. Um, to start out, let's look at something from last time. You can see that in our design tree we have the three parts here and on this icon here we have that stop sign or stop light signal. That's, that shows that we need to hit the rebuild button. When we hit the rebuild button it will update all of those parts to be current. So that's something that you can see that we didn't get to see last time. Alright, now we'll notice that all of these parts have a name part 1, part 2, and part 3. Let's say that we need to turn in this assignment we need to put a name code on this. We also need to name it how it's, it says in the lab. It's best if you name the files correctly the first time so you don't have to go through this process. But if you do have to go through this process, I want to go over it with you so that you get it right. So let's go ahead and get out of all of these parts. So we'll go ahead and save them as we exit. So that's the assembly and the part 3, part 2, and part 1. So now we don't have any parts open. And we'll go ahead and open the folder. We can see that all of these parts are here. If we were to go in and just modify these files, files names, we're going to put in my name code, which is, let's say I'm in lab section 3. My last name is Howell and my first name is Adam and then a hyphen and let's say this has to be named a circle and we'll go ahead and accept that let's go ahead and do that to all of these part files so three and this is a rectangle let's just pretend these are the names that are asked for in the lab so again I would have wanted to name these correctly the first time so I don't have to worry about all of this. This is a triangle. And the assembly also changes names. Just need to put my name code in front of that. Alright. So if you were to submit the files like this, it would be incorrect because the assembly is linked to each one of these files by their old name. I'll show you what I mean. So let's go back into SolidWorks and we'll click the open button and we want to go ahead and open the assembly file. So we'll go ahead and click the assembly file from the list and hit open. Alright, there we have the assembly. The first thing that pops up is it says that it can't locate and then it gives the path file, this reference path, what folders each one is in. It says it can't locate part one of the assembly. Would you like to find it yourself? Let's go ahead and click yes, we do. So it will go ahead and open up the folder where it was saved previously. And now we can see that here are all of our files, but we don't have a part one file. We're lucky because we know that we just renamed that file just before we did this. If you were to turn that in, your TA would get the same message and it would be harder for him to guess which one was which. We'll go over that in a minute. So let's go ahead and select circle for that part. That will reassign that part one as a circle and we'll hit open. Okay, and now it's going to prompt us for the second part. So it's looking for part two now. It can't find it because the name has changed. And we're going to go ahead and locate it ourselves. So let's click yes. And now let's pretend we're the TA and we don't know which file is which. We don't know, we have to guess. So let's pretend we guess that it's the triangle. It's actually the rectangle, but we're going to click on the triangle and hit open. This is going to give us another message that says the internal ID of the document, or that triangle, does not match the internal ID of the referencing document. So if you remember from when we were creating part files, each part file has a list of entities. You can think of the things in the design tree, what has to match up. Each line in the sketch, or each line of the extrude, has to line up. And you can see that this rectangle isn't anywhere near that triangle and so that internal ID isn't going to match up. It's trying to put those those mates together and it, we, it can't find that bottom face to match it with the top face of this cylinder because that bottom face of the, the triangle doesn't exist. So it's asking us if we want to select yes to accept this document anyway or to browse for another replacement model. If we were to select yes then we would have to go in manually and update our assembly to match. Sometimes this happens when you have a slightly different part. Say we still have the rectangle part, which is named differently, and it has one or two different 
modifications that have been made to it. We can go ahead and go through and, and link those up to the previous IDs or references so that they match properly. But this time, since the triangle is clearly not the rectangle, we're going to select No. And we're going to select the right one, which is the rectangle, and hit Open. Okay, so now SolidWorks is happy with that. And now it's asking for the part three. This time we're going to click No. We don't want to find it ourselves. What this is going to do is it's going to suppress that third part and say we're not going to use it right now. So you can see in our design tree it has the first and second parts, the circle and the rectangle, but part three is, is grayed out and it says the file for this component could not be located and it's not going to try. And that will just be left out. Um, if we ever want to go in and find that part again, say we now found it or we know what happened to it or we've sent it to ourselves and we we've, we've now have the file, we can right click on it and we can say set as resolved and it will prompt us for the same thing. Do you want to find that part by yourself? Let's go ahead and click yes. And we're going to go ahead and click on the rectangle again, pretending we're having to guess which one it is. We're going to see that same message we saw before about the internal ID and we're going to select yes instead of no this time. So let's click yes. So now we can see that there's errors in the document. You can see that it's trying to put in that rectangle part, but there's a few of those mates that just aren't working because that entity is no longer present. So if we were to go through and open up our, our thing here, we can see that these mates are not correct. Okay, so let's look at this design tree again. So at the top level, we have our assembly level. Each of the parts is listed below, and then a section for all of the mates that go with a part. You can see that these first three mates are fine because they relate the first two parts together. You can see that those two planes are matching, and then that top face of the cylinder and the bottom face of the rectangle are matching. But now these three are missing. So there's that level of mates, and then there's also a folder that has mates for each individual part. All of the mates related to this rectangle part will be listed here. And there are six of them because that, that rectangle is in the middle. If we were to open up this cylinder part or the circle part, there's only three listed because there's only three mates that are related to that bottom cylinder. Okay, So you can see when we put in this wrong object that everything that's wrong turns red and we'd have to fix that. So let's say that this rectangle is what we wanted. This first uh, mate relationship are those two points. So if we wanted to modify that, let's edit that feature. It takes us in to modify that mate relationship. And it says that other vertex is missing because it, we've changed the part so much that it doesn't recognize what even that is. So let's hit delete that. We could actually select a different vertex on this. Let's zoom in so we maybe can get it. It's actually not letting us get that point. There we go. Actually clicked the edge because my computer's not working right. But anyway, if we click the edge and click OK, then that mate now is OK here. We just added a new different mate than what was before. So if we're adding a different part like this, we'd have to go through and, and make it better and show SolidWorks how that part fits in right. But there you have it. There you have naming files and having to reassign the paths. So again, to stress the importance, it's good to name the files correctly the first time. One other thing before we end this is if you have a space in a file or a special character or something, when you upload or download those files into Moodle or any other program, sometimes those programs put in an underscore instead. And so when a Moodle puts in an underscore and then your TA downloads the file, that file name is different. It's close to what it was before because it just has an underscore instead of a space, but your TA will still have to go through and reference those files and go through those menus. So you want to make sure that you, you do that correctly, that you name things right and make sure that everything works. Um, one thing, let's go back. We want to change this rectangle back to the triangle. So we're going to go ahead and rec or right click that part in there and let's see if we can find the right one. If our the thing we're looking for isn't in this list, we can click this double arrow down and then we can look for more. We want to replace components. 
So replace this rectangle that we added here with a new one. We're going to need to browse for it. We're going to click this triangle instead and hit open and accept that. There's other choices here that you can you can look at later. So when we select that, then it pops up with a few of these error messages. It's showing us what's going on here. Let's go ahead and expand our windows again. Try and move these around. It's being a little bit weird. I think this is a glitch that they'll need to fix. Let's move this out of the way as well. All right, so in our property manager, we can see that there's made entities for these two parts. And one they have a question on, the other two work. So this one that they have a question on is the one that we, we went through and changed before we put in this new part. And these other two are the ones that existed before that are good. So let's look through here. We can see all of these things. This is actually new for SolidWorks 2011. Um, they've actually added a lot of new things in these property managers that help you get through it. So choose a mate entity to replace or expand the tree to edit the individual mates. So let's go ahead and edit this mate relationship here. So actually, I've never done it here in 2011, so I don't think that's letting us. Um, so let's go ahead. I, we'll do it the other way. We'll go ahead and close these error messages and accept it. Make sure the window's expanded. It's going to give us this error message again. Okay, this is how it usually is. In, in 2010, it was this way. It would just take us to this screen. And we have this mate relationship here that is not right. It's giving us that red error message. So we'll go ahead and left click on that and do edit feature. That brings us up with the mate tool that was before. So instead of that edge, we want to delete that edge. We want to keep that vertex there. And we want to add the vertex here. Um, it's kind of hard to see what you're selecting, but if you look at the mouse, right now it's just an arrow. If you hover over a line, then it shows a green line by the cursor. If you hover over a face, it's a green square. And if you cover, or hover over a vertex, it's a green point or circle. So that will help you know what kind of entity you're selecting. So let's go ahead and select that vertex there again. That will line those up nicely, and we'll go ahead and accept that and accept it again. Now you can see that our whole design tree is right. There's no red or error messages anymore. So now we're good to go. Okay, we're almost done with this lesson, but let's talk about one more thing before we end. Um, when you are going to submit files, you want to make sure that they're presentable when your TA or your boss opens them. Um, usually it's a good idea to go through your design tree, make sure everything's in place, make sure that the names of the parts are what you want them to be, that you might even also go in and check your sketches to see if they're fully defined. So all of these don't have the hyphens by them, so they should be good. And this one's also good. All right. And then you can close these up so that it's nice and um, compact. If you wanted to show your boss something, maybe you'd have one open and something you know, open like that. Also, if you look over here, in the graphics window, you wouldn't want to see it like that when you first open up your file. So make sure to do an isometric view or another view that you want your your boss to see before you save it. Because when you click this save button, it will save it as it is and how it is oriented and everything. So now I'm going to go ahead and save it. Also, you want to make sure that there are no error messages or anything because when your boss opens that, that's a red flag that says that this part might not be correct. So check your files before you submit them. Make sure everything's right and the names are right and that all the path references are right. And then you're ready to submit them. You should get full scores for your, your assignments if you do that. All right. Thanks for watching.